Welcome in, everybody, to the Coach Shinnick Show. I'm Will Kennedy, and this is Coach Shinnick, the reigning National Coach of the Year. Congratulations again on that. We were just saying this is season five for us here on the UWF Sports Network, and we were in hiatus for a little while. Right? We didn't have a 2020 season, and now here we are doing it uh, 2021, ready to roll for the season. So let's kind of break into the team a little bit. You guys have had a spring. You've had some extended time over the summer and now into fall camp. I know you're ready to play. I know the guys are ready to play. No, we really are, and you know, you and I talked uh, about the spring. We felt like that really propelled us to go into the summer. NCAA gave us uh, some guidance where we could work with our guys in July. That has paid dividends. We rolled into fall camp, you know, got hit with a couple of injuries here and there and trying to figure that out. But for the most part, extremely pleased uh, with what our guys have done throughout the course of, uh, I think last night the scrimmage uh, was practice 16, uh, which is just about the right amount uh, before you start preparing for McNeese. But love where our guys are at. We've got a lot of seniors. We've got 23 seniors uh, that are, uh, you know, really taking charge of this thing. And the exciting part about that, I mean, we, 10 of those guys, 11 of those guys are working on their masters or second degree. So it's a pretty, pretty educated senior class. Those guys have really taken this thing by the horns and really guided this team I think to where we are right now which we feel good in our preparation leading up to McNeese. It feels like a joke but it's not you may have some doctoral candidates on the field before all is said and done it, it does feel good to say that it is game week and we haven't had one in quite a long time. Let's start we'll, we'll talk about the defense to kind of get ready for this first game at McNeese State an FCS opponent we'll talk about them a little later in the show but this defense when we left off 2019, you're winning the championship, points are flying on the board, you're basically outscoring people you know, at the end. I think the defense has come a long way and you've got some guys you've brought in, you've got some guys who have developed a little bit in this time we've had off and, and they're really looking sharp. Sure, and I think uh, what we've seen is really just kind of a development of, of the whole group. Uh, we'll talk about some of the guys we brought in, but really up front, uh, Miles Myers, Matt Cotell, Aiden Sweat, Brandon Pennerton, our returning defensive linemen have really done a great job. We've added Jaquez Cross, uh, and he's come in and really established himself as a uh, player that, you know, gives people issues. You go to the linebacking crew, and, you know, Shea Campbell was with us all year. He's been fantastic. Uh, You've got uh, Trent Archie uh, on one side. You got the Marco Artis as well as Key Wetzel. And then Stefan Williams uh, and Gael Laurent on the inside really give us three really good inside. We got the outside covered, excited about what we've seen there. You move to the secondary. My goodness, Marcus Clayton's played forever for us. Uh, Sherrod Oliver is a two-year starter. Uh, D. Bell will be uh, in his second year of starting. T.J. Limehouse comes back from injury. Keon Holder uh, is playing fantastic football and finished the season playing well. You got uh, Shannon Showers, Shimon Moore, Ant Johnson at corner along with Ye Gibbons. We feel like we've gotten an experienced athletic uh, secondary to go along with a very solid front uh, that really, uh, I mean, they're playing at a high level, excited to uh, you know, see how they play and how they fly around. I think what, what's exceptional and what you can kind of see in some of the highlights we're showing as we talk here is that you get that defense and they go against an offense that is reloaded, might be a good word, but also with some great people coming back, and, and that competition is fantastic every day. We're going to take a break, and coming up next on the show, we'll, we'll dive in a little bit, talk about what you've got on the offensive side of the ball. There's names you know, there's some new names in, and they're going to be an exciting group as well. Keep it right here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people with a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Look at that. 
That's called a takes two hands burger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese, hand chopped veggies, and everything else you could possibly ask for. Yep, that's your Whataburger, made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. What a burger, just like you like it. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Pen Air Federal Credit Union. Jenny King, Hill Kelly Dodge, High Point Hotel Group, and the Florida Lottery. Welcome back into the Coach Sinek Show. I'm Will Kennedy. This is Coach Pete Sinek. We are talking UWF football, and we're excited because it is game week. McNeese nice State coming up here, Lake Charles, Louisiana, on a Saturday, September 4th. That really feels good to wow. say. I know it feels good we, to be in meetings and talking about this. No, we finally get to do this. You know, we as you go back to July of 20, what are we going to do? What's D2 going to, what decision are they going to make? How's it going to look? To be here right now, game week for McNeese is huge. Yeah, we've jumped the shark a little bit, though. We're not defending national champs here, holding on until, until somebody else can take it away. Here we right. go. Let's talk of the offense. We talked defense a little bit and how strong that unit is in the last segment. But this is an offense coming back. When last we saw them on the field, national championship game, McKinney, Texas, putting up 48 points, winning a national title. You get your quarterback back, which I know as an offensive coach, that's, that's where it all starts. And, and Austin Reed has had some time to physically develop, mm -hmm. but also – it feels like he's as comfortable in this offense as you or Rudy Carlton, the, the, you know, the offensive coordinator, that he knows it inside out. No, he does. And I think one of the things that he's really worked on is just knowing where to go, what to do. Austin comes in, my opinion, he's the best quarterback in Division II. Um, you know, somebody's got to take that mantle from him. But when you return and have uh, 4,000 yards passing and 40 touchdowns, that puts you up there. Uh, he's shown that. He's improved. I still don't think he's reached his peak. I still think there's areas he can improve upon, uh, but he's playing at a very, very good um, level right now that we're excited about. And really, he's using a wide variety of offensive talent around him to uh, kind of maximize this offense. And really, though, from watching you through the spring and, and on into the fall, I mean, what a dynamic group of receivers. There are some guys that have stepped up in a Rodney Coates and a Bambi, and, and yeah. then you bring in a guy like David Durden. There's some talent there. You mentioned um, Karan, you mentioned Rodney Coates, and then Kenneth Chanel. All three of those guys played extensively in 2019, and, and, and they have wonderful resumes for us. Evan Mitchell played a good bit. He stepped up. You add now to that mix uh, a David Durden, which is playing, he is playing at an extremely wow. high level. Okay, Larry Rembert, who just continues to get better every day. All right. And then we have three other guys who have really kind of emerged. Zach Offord, who we redshirted. Jared Smith, who's a true freshman. Uh, and then we have Nate Howard, who um, really has come on. You know, we redshirted him, and he's been around the program a little bit. He's done a fantastic job. So our top nine, we feel very good about, the, you know, just interchangeable. Obviously, the top five are very, very good. But, you know, six through nine are competing at a very high level. And I don't know if you said Evan Mitchell. He's in there, too. Yep, I mean, Evan, yeah, yeah, we've got Evan, a bunch Evan of guys. number five, yeah. You've he's got a mix. similar issue slash good issue to have in the backfield with a stable of running backs and a bunch of guys that can do some different things. We, you know, we know, we know Mr. Newton and the power sure. football and Anthony Johnson, the way those guys yep. can run. And then you've got Shamari Mason back and some other guys that – are they scat backs? Is that, is that a throwback? I mean, well, it might be a throwback, but I'll tell you, I, I think both uh, Ravion and Shamari are complete backs because they can block, they can catch, and they can run. Uh, you mentioned uh, Anthony Johnson Jr. and Jervon Newton. Both those guys, solid. They establish the run. They see it well. Shamari and Ravion, they're a little more of the more dynamic uh, that can make it work. And then, we, then we've got you know, Seth Johnson, uh, who's really our fifth guy right now, uh, along with Jaquel Fells, who's a red shirt or a true freshman. We feel like we got a dynamic backfield. It's good because, I mean, lead right into the offensive line. Our o line's playing extremely well. Zach Elam, I'm going to start at the center position, replacing Devin Gibson. Uh, you know, Zach came in, he redshirted last year, 
Uh, he's really put himself in a fantastic place to be our starting center. Dalton Simpler, who started a lot of games, he played at center, he's played at guard, he's now our starting left guard, playing extremely well. Jacob Bruce started every game at left tackle uh, a year ago, doing the same thing. Mike Dill has been playing for four years at right tackle. And then, you know, Kenny Roman came in as a, as a fifth year senior transfer from IUP. We actually played against him in 2017. He's just really established himself uh, as our right tackle. And those five are just gelling extremely well. Now our backups are playing really well too. I mean, like how Parker uh, Thomas is playing, like how Nash Nelson's playing, Juwok uh, and Marshall Elam uh, doing a really good job. And then Oak Stipe, who's been in the program Great for a name. while. No, Great Oak, he's got fantastic. He's playing to the best he's ever played. So I love what we got on the offensive line. Just to mention 10 names, to say that they're playing well, that's huge uh, at our level to be able to say it. And then, you know, lead into the tight end position. We got two guys that, I mean, they're playing well. Uh, Jacuri Jackson blocking extremely well, had a big catch uh, in the scrimmage. Uh, and then Mav, uh, I mean, he's, he's really become the complete tight end for us. So we've never really had two that can play interchangeable, so I, I'm excited about this offense. Not sure I'm ready from calling the game standpoint for you to start throwing to the tight end. It's been, it's been a long time. <laughs> been, it's been a long – and, and we're not going to forget Joe Winter. You mentioned you know, your left tackle and your yeah. center. Yeah. Left guard, too. And yeah. Those were all conference guys, so you no. know, the, the line is great and they're back. No, Samuel Anton at left tackle, yeah. Joe Joe Wintrick, second team all tackle. So, I mean, we – or second team guard. We lost three guys that had played a lot of football for us, but I think this O-line really has stepped up. Coach Sane doing a great job there. We're going to take a little bit of a break here on the Coach Shinnick Show. We're going to let Maya Clark step in, talk about some of the other sports. Football not the only thing going on here on the campus of the University of West Florida in the fall. And we'll join Coach again in our last segment to break down the game coming up with McNeese State. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. What does Argo Spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind, and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hi, I'm Maya Clark and welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. I'll be hosting these next two segments. In a minute, we'll talk to Rodney Coates from football, but first, we'll talk to Taylor Van Eckren from volleyball. Well, today we're joined with Taylor Van Eckren from UWF Volleyball. Taylor, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? Good. So you guys have had the past season to really just focus on your skills and building that team chemistry. How do you think that's going to play into this upcoming season? Yeah, I think it, I mean, everybody had that long kind of break of mm -hmm. not having a real season. So I think in some ways it gives us a lot of time to work on those things, and I think we did. Yeah. And I know for a fact that our team is a lot stronger. We all really enjoy each other on and off the court, and I think that started with our season off. So you guys have been practicing now for a few weeks. Preseason's really getting into it now. What have you noticed so far that sets this team apart from any other team you've played with here? I think the biggest thing for me is our chemistry and how much you know, we don't let each other go through a fight without getting in it and helping each other out. And I love that about our team. We're very relentless, we're driven, and I think that's gonna be something that's gonna set us apart down the road. So what preparation has gone into getting ready for this season? I know you guys have practices and weights and different team meetings, but what is it like balancing all of that plus when school starts and just trying to manage being a college student in general? 
Yeah, it's a lot and it's, it's a lot of having to work with different kinds of people to really get to the same goal. But I think one thing that we're working on is focusing in. Whatever you're doing in that task at the moment, dial in, go 100% and then worry about everything else later. And I think our team is doing a really good job of play by play, homework assignment by homework mm -hmm. assignment, those little things. Right, so this, academically, it's your senior year. You've played for Coach Walter for coming up on four years now. What does it mean to be able to play for her? I, it is one of the best things that's ever happened to me in my entire life. She is such an inspiration to this community, but to our team, and I am a thousand percent a different person today than when I walked into her program. So I'm excited to have my last two years with her. Okay. So. A lot of people may not know that you play with a hearing aid and that you have a hearing aid. How did you find out and what was that like for you? So I was born with hearing loss. It was, we think, genetic, not 100% sure, but I found out that I needed hearing aids when I was in second grade, so I was about seven or eight. Got my first pair. It's an adjustment at the beginning, but um, especially here, your team really has got to go behind you and this group of girls has, coach has, and they really help me get through the kinds of things that I need to get through with hearing loss and playing volleyball. Right, so in the 2019 regional tournament you had to play without it. What was that experience like for you? It was something. It was, <laughs> it was a little stressful, but um, you know, coach always talks about overcoming adversity and winning no matter what. And for me, I wasn't going to let not having right. my one hearing aid be an excuse to, to not winning that game. What would your advice be to girls and women in sports? My advice would be to set goals. Have dreams, chase them, do whatever you can to go after them, and just don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something because you can do anything you put your mind to. And to wrap things up, what are you most looking forward to this upcoming season? I'm looking forward to getting in the game. <laughs> it's been a while. We haven't been able to really, you know, gear up and, and play in front of our community. And I know a lot of them are excited to see mm -hmm. us, so we're excited to play for them. Big support for volleyball, always packed with the community and yeah. students. I know you guys are ready to get back to that. Saw a little bit of that at the scrimmage the other night, a lot yeah. of people. So yeah. I'm sure you guys are ready to get back to that. Well, right. Taylor, thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, go Argos. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pregame grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. This portion of Argo Sports Insider is brought to you by Coca-Cola. Baptist Healthcare and the Andrews Institute, Publix, Whataburger, and CPC Office Technologies. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. I'm Maya Clark, and today we're joined by Rodney Coates. Rodney, how are you today? I'm good. How much so? Good. So you've been here since 2015. Yeah. How has it been seeing this team start from scratch to winning a national championship? Um, it's been crazy. Uh, like. When we first came in, we only came in like with like a vision and stuff like that. Like that's how we were so on coming here, and so just to see it manifest to what it is now, it's like I never thought I would see it. So, as a senior in high school, what made you want to come to UWF? Um, the connections I made with the coaches, um, Coach Deese, Coach O.C. Williams, they were like really involved in my recruiting process, like from the initial point of contact all the way until the day I got here. They was just like really involved and really thorough. So what does it mean for you to be able to represent UWF and Coach Shinnick? 
Um, it's a privilege. It's a privilege and an honor. Uh, they gave me a chance to small town kid come and get a degree. Um, that's something like it's very unlikely, like from where I'm from. Like it's you go to high school and you go work at a mill. And so like I'm one of the select few that was able to get out of that small area, come and like just see other things and be able to get an education. So it's, I'm very blessed. So what has been one of the biggest lessons that you've learned being here at UWF? Um, perseverance. Um, it was a roller coaster ride. Like if anybody know <clears throat> my story and stuff since I've been here, like it's been ups and it's been downs and stuff like that. So um, just perseverance and like just maintain um, a com like a level um, head through adversity and stuff like that. What is something that you wish you would have been able to tell younger Rodney, knowing what you now know about your experience here at UWF? Don't let like small minuscule things uh, just mess up the rest of my day. Like something coming in like early on, like I would have like a bad episode or a bad event happen like very early on and it just like that whole day was washed. Like if it happened at 9 a.m. from 9 a.m. all the way to the rest of that day it was just messed up. So if I would would have learned like how to just fail fast early on in life or just flush it a lot earlier and be able to continue with my day. Um, that's something I would have definitely told myself. So with this being your last season at UWF, what are you hoping to accomplish? Um, I'm just really hoping to have a complete season. Uh, we left a lot of meat on the bone. Like, I'm pretty sure it doesn't look like that um, in 2019, but we haven't played a home playoff game. We haven't um, went undefeated. We haven't won a conference championship. So just to be able to put ourselves in position to obtain those things, that's like all I would ask for in my senior season. What do you enjoy most about playing at UWF? Oh, my teammates. Yeah, those are the funniest dudes on campus. And like just being able to play football, like I probably would have never met them if it wasn't for football. But just to be able to meet like a lot of different people and stuff like that and just have fun in the locker room, be around those guys, it makes it a lot easier um, to be able to play this like tough and rigorous sport. So yeah, those guys definitely. Last question, you've had an entire season off just to get ready with this team getting ready to play the first game on campus that UWF has ever had. How are you feeling about this upcoming game? Um, to be honest, I feel like right at home. I mean, we done practice like a million times out there and now it's just like, you know, a couple more spectators and stuff like that. And we just feel like, hey, they come out, they support us. We're gonna give them a show that they deserve to see. So yeah, we ready. Well, Rodney, thank you for joining me today. Thank Good luck this me. season yes, and go Argos. Go Argos, thank you. Realm Apartments is a proud sponsor of the Argonauts. Realm is opening less than a mile from campus and is now leasing brand new apartments and townhouses for a fall 2021 opening. These apartments come fully furnished and rates include water, sewer, cable, Wi-Fi, and trash. Check out realmlife.com for more information. Go Argos! who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into the Coach Shittick Show. Coach, joining us again, it is time to break down the matchup. People have been waiting a long, long time for this game. It seems like years and years. It, it has been quite a while. McNeese State, the first opponent, and I know when you scheduled this game, FCS opponent on the road, Lake Charles, Louisiana, you probably weren't sure exactly where your program would be. You like to think you're going to be in a certain spot. Sure. Maybe a little ahead of where expectations were, but... What does this game feel like going over to play McNeese as the defending Division II national champs? Well, it really feels like a playoff game because they're that good of an opponent. Um, you know, when we scheduled this about three years ago, obviously we missed last year, but we, we were hoping going into season six 
we'd have a, established ourselves as a program that taking on an FCS week one uh, would be you know, a great challenge for us. Uh, I like it, it keeps our guys focused, keeps their attention uh, at a high level. Uh, I think McNeese is really, really good. Uh, they play great football on both sides of the ball. Uh, we're gonna have to be at our best. Uh, and that's really what we've been telling our team. And it, I, I think it's played out well because our, our guys are focused and dialed in on you know, trying to be at their best. So uh, it's helped our fall camp preparation, knowing that they're gonna play an FCS program at their place uh, at 12 p.m. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's helped our preparation, but they're very good, and we're gonna have to play uh, at a very high level to, uh, uh, to come out with a win. It's great the conditions are slightly similar here in, in you know, Northwest Florida over there in Lake Charles, because a noon kick in early September can be a little tough. I think it's kind of interesting, I've asked some of your guys, you know, the difference between being the hunter and being the hunted at the Division II level as you're the champs. This, this does seem like a kind of a perfect way to start because you are putting yourself into a situation where you can be the hunter again. Yeah, no doubt. And I think that's really what, um, you know, in scheduling a game, we'd hope to have, uh, again, last year, we'd hope to have a good year so that when you do that, all right, let's get everybody focused. Let's start off on the right foot. And I think if you look at our non-conference schedule with McNeese and then having two weeks later to go play the number six team, number seven team in the country in Texas A&M Commerce, you know, we feel like we've set ourselves up to say, okay, if we're going to be this type of team, how are we going to handle it, what it's going to look like. Uh, you know, in 2016, we, we, we came up with the phrase, our best is good enough to beat anybody in the country. That still holds up, even though we've, we've proven that, but now we just got to keep doing it. Yeah, this will be a good test of that. And again, you know, rankings are out, number one in the country, of course. Congratulations as the defending champs. Tell us a little bit about McNeese, you know, and kind of what you expect. What do they do well? Yeah, they, they, they use their quarterback extremely well. Um, their quarterback is Ed Ogeron's son, uh, very athletic, uh, very, um, you know, very smart with how he takes care of the ball and what he does with it. Uh, they've got playmakers on the outside and a very solid running game. So we're going to see, along with that, a very experienced offensive line. Uh, so again, I, I think it's a playoff type team in Division II, if not up that a little bit. Defensively, uh, probably as good a defensive line as we're going to see. Very athletic defensive ends, uh, secondary that can run, and linebackers that just flow very fast. So, uh, you know, I feel like it's as you know challenging a group uh, as we're going to see. Well, we're hoping a lot of our Argo fans are going to make the trip over to Lake Charles, Louisiana. If you can't, our friends here with Cox Sports TV are going to air that game. I think ESPN Plus, also the game between the University of West Florida and McNeese State. Sounds really cool to say. And then, of course, after that, First home game right here. We're right outside of where we are right now in the Daryl Gooden Center. We'll be on the campus. Southwest Baptist will be coming in for the first ever on-campus yep. game. And then you mentioned Texas A&M Commerce. It's off and rolling. If you want to see the schedule, GoArgos.com is the spot to take a look at the complete 2021 schedule and also see everything else that's going on. Follow us on the social media, the Argo Armada app. I'm going to pitch everything we've got yeah. right now. Keep going. Coach. You're doing a good it's, job. Going, it's going to be great. And of course, you can follow UWF football on all their social media platforms. We'll be here each week. The Coach Shinnick Show will break down the previous game just like we've done here and preview the next one. Good luck to you guys on Saturday. Also, the radio ESPN Pensacola. Uh, Coach and I will have a pregame show starting about a half hour before mm -hmm. kickoff. And then 12 noon, ball in the air, 21, 2021 season underway. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. We'll see you next time on the Coach Shinnick Show.